I would venture out to say that there is no facet of American life that has not been touched by Black history. If everybody had to read a book that was uh, essential to understanding the contributions of Black folks in American history. Any telling of um, U.S., the U.S. history, uh, U U.S. history um, is incomplete without uh, several of W.E.B. Du Bois's books, right? There, there's, you know, from Reconstruction to uh, souls of black folk, uh, souls of white folk. Like there are ways, um, there are ways that Du Bois early on is really speaking to a lot of the the troubles and tribulations of black people in the U.S., but also the resistance and culture and joy that we can be found, um, you know, existing alongside uh, trauma and unfortunately. Um, so I think, you know, really you cannot go wrong with um, any of those texts, you know, as a kind of foundational pieces. Um, and even, especially, um, especially uh, the, the, so the black folk, I escaped my mind for a second. Um, when he's really kind of dispelling the, the myth, doing away with the, the idea that uh, black people are biologically or genetically different and inferior, right? So he's really kind of wrestling with that issue um, and really beautifully kind of pointing out how this fake science that has that was existing, that had, has existed in many ways still does, um, is, you know, needs, needs to be interrogated. And this is how he, you know, this is how he went to do it and really lays it out uh, in an effective way. Well, I think, you know, readings from King and then uh, as Edwin mentioned, W.E.B. Du Bois. Um, I think, you know, if, if they were, if they were part of mainstream curriculum, which they don't seem, I don't recall them being, uh, you know, until you, you'd finally seek them out, you know, in college, um, then uh, students would grow up, you know, with a more well-rounded perspective on things, uh, you know, not, you know, you know he hearing, you know, that there are, can be varying viewpoints about the same thing. And I think that helps them to then come to the conclusion that they themselves have to make their own decisions on uh, analysis and, uh, you know, w what they're going to adopt as, as their own set of beliefs. And and, and 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 they're also learning that it's not a threatening environment to be placed in. That you know there can be different views and perspectives, opinions about the same thing. It's it's, it's the normal course of things, and you know that's why we were given a brain to to use it to make decisions about you know how we want to think about things. We have a building named for Booker T. Washington. And it's interesting that I'm sure many people who go by our center, even with that big block in front of the center, Steve, don't know who Booker T. Washington is. But he had a book called Up From Slavery. And I think that that's a book worth worth reading. Um, hardworking man, a lot of times, unfortunately, juxtaposed to W.B. Du Bois. Uh, I don't think that it's necessary to juxtapose Du Bois to Booker T. Washington. I think that, again, these are different ideas they had. You know, one was seen as intellectual. The other one was seen as, you know, a blue collar guy. Look, I think people should read up from slavery. And then another one that I would recommend is uh, by a guy named S.C. Anderson. He wrote a book called The Black Holocaust, which I think is an amazing piece of work. Graphically, uh, graphically. Um, I won't call it pleasing, but it, it really helps to tell the story of where black folks came from. And it's a very, very basic book. I think a high school student could read uh, The Black Holocaust. So we've got a few good books that we're recommending to those of you who are out there watching Building Community today. What can you put in your home? 
to bring black history into your home on a daily basis? Yeah, so I think, you know, in in black households, I think I've seen I've seen that more or less already, right? There you'll have you'll have the painting that has a a, a few figureheads, right? The Malcolm X, uh, Martin Luther King, et cetera, uh, Garvey, even, you know. Um, so I, I've seen that uh, quite a bit already. I think um, I think what you consume in your home. So I know you asked. I know you asked about um, decorating, but I think what types of media is consumed in the home, I think is important. Um, you know, social media has a way of being um, really, really good in some ways, and it can be also be really, really bad. Um, but on the good side, there's a lot of really good information that would, that in, in, back in the day would take you reading a bunch of these books to kind of, to get, right? But now you can get it in 90 seconds from, from an expert even on TikTok, right? You can get someone that's that's gonna sit down with you and just spit in straight facts, straight history um, that, you know, that's coming from a place of expertise. Not to, not to say that you, all your information needs to come from experts, right? But to say that it's, it's out there, it's more, now more available and easily accessible um, than ever before. So I think cultivating a home in which we allow uh, children and adults and elders even, right? to take part in kind of, um, you know, self-educating in some ways um, or being, being, being open to being curious about, you know, I don't know much about uh, emancipation in Louisiana. Let me go look it up, you know, and then you hop online and now you're seeing these clips and really informative, informative things. Um, so I think allowing media, uh, different types of media to be consumed in a way that'll help members of the household, I think would be uh, beneficial. One of the things I used to do with my children, <clears throat> I used to homeschool my children, is um, point out the, the different inventions that Blacks were responsible for. And I think that that's one of those basic things that could be integrated into any. So your, to your point of time, Steve, these are just basic things that I think if people knew. So whenever we would stop at a stoplight, I would tell them to thank Garrett Morgan. Otherwise, we'd have an accident. So the Black inventor, Garrett Morgan, we would stop. And they were little enough to have fun with this. Stop because at the stoplight. The other traffic goes by and they would say, thank you, Garrett Morgan. And then it would turn <laughs> green <laughs> and we would continue. Black people and white people have been in this country pretty much an identical amount of time. So their histories both go back to similar point in time. Uh, they've experienced and lived together through the same period. Um, how does one, how does one side of that have far greater play in written history than the other? Um, I think that's just just a, a basic question we have to ask ourselves, and then hopefully correct that as we move forward. I guess February is a time of the year where where we can address it specifically, but then the rest of the rest of the year we need to carry it out. Um, you asked the question, well, um, what can people do in their homes? Um, and then Edlin talked about uh, you know typical uh, photographs of uh, black important black historical figures you might see in a, in a, in a black home. Um, but I'm not sure that list is very long. And I think maybe you see similar ones over and over again, but the list should be longer and the faces should be a much larger group. Um, but somehow or other, uh, people haven't been accessed, to, been given access to learn about that. Maybe a particular family that lives in a community in Chester, um, might have taken a liking to the guy who invented the traffic light, but no one ever told them about it. So, uh, um, you know, so, so it's limited. And I don't think that you'll find that to be the case in a white home. Uh, I think uh, you're going to find uh, a lot, a lot more to look at uh, in the way of what they might consider their heroes or uh, favorite historical figures.
I am generally optimistic um, of the direction, um, albeit slow, and you know sometimes seemingly with more downs than ups. Uh, I am optimistic that we are moving toward a place that is um, generally better. Right. I, you know, I, I'll, I'll leave it there. I don't think I, I won't say that we're go, we going to be um, egalitarian, you know, or everything's going to be equal right away. But I do think things are progressing. However, slow is moving in the right direction. I think forms like this are important. Um, I think, like I mentioned earlier, social, the presence of social media can be can be a good tool um, and not being afraid. Uh, I think one one piece of advice that I would add to um, or I would suggest to maybe young younger uh, viewers is don't be afraid to ask questions um speak to your elders um there's a wealth of knowledge there so i think that that's what i would say i'm optimistic and not to be afraid to be curious um always